hairs. I think I think again we throw old ball hairs in the wool C category because I still need a couple more wool Oh, <laughs> a lot of wool C's. We'll see. Mason Keat 125, the King 117. I mean, uh, Mason Keat didn't wins, but doesn't put up the impressive numbers. Does that show a flaw in Mason Keat? Well, I think Mason Keat did what they had to do to win. They were up against it on a Monday night, down eight points with a tight end. I mean, you know, you know how it can go. That tight end, Brent, I believe the Boone Hunter had. I think it was a tight. draft pick of the Boone Hunter that yeah. uh, again didn't make the cut on that team. Now, that's a tough team to stay on. Well, you know, uh, but he pulled it out. He was down eight. He got about I think fifteen points or so, maybe a little bit less. Dude, the tight end and. Again, he rolls on. And you know, that Detroit Lion offense is not going to slow down unless somebody stops him. Uh, the King, again, just middling. Well, what to say about the, <laughs> the King, I mean, again, after their big win with the Peaceful Warriors, we're starting to see what those moves he did, or if they're for real or not. And right now, they're yeah, not for real. When like Indian Tomlinson is, I mean, you know, maybe one out of four games, you're going to get something. And I believe this was going to be uh, one of my upset specials from last week. Uh, Dr. Dick besting the Boone Humper. I believe that's 131 or 137 to 88. Uh, Boone Humper can't seem to get it going. And Dr. Dick is well, I establishing we, himself we, as a powerhouse. We received uh, uh, a fax this morning uh, from the management at the Fire Spinning Jimmy's with some inter interesting information about that Boone Humper team. Um, I think just because they're an Eastern rival, they were sending this anonymously. But the statistic was that uh, of the five weeks, uh, three of those five weeks, the Boone Humper has, has fallen to the uh, biggest blowout category. Uh, the Toyota Tundra biggest blowout. That's right. Sponsored in part by. Got your ass kicked, period. And that's he, a, he holds three of those medals for being blown out more than anybody that week. That may have to be a, a <laughs> record, but I'll also tell you, I've talked to the management of the Boone Humper, and he does also mention to me that there was another record where 12-0, uh, and, and you... Um, that was just last season, folks. So, oh, yes. Right. And I believe the Boone Humper management right. also meant, wanted me to mention to some other uh, managers in Fantasy League Fantastico that uh, he is not interested in uh, uh, dubious trades. He's not desperate. He's not a, uh, a drunken prostitute. Whatever. The Boone Humper is not there. All right. <laughs> What else are we talking about? Waiver wire pickups. We forgot that little uh, bit. Uh, yeah, before. I mean, some I, people I did think some great things. The the peaceful warriors made a couple of waiver wire moves that helped them win that week. But one in particular was my best waiver wire out of the week was the Pierre Garçon. Pierre Garçon. Pierre Garçon with two touchdowns, uh, 130 yards, 30 points on the board. That really propelled them to victory. Pierre Garçon is uh, my waiver wire out of the week. Pierre waiter, but I suppose uh, peaceful warriors weren't waiting on him because <laughs> he produced straight away. <laughs> Up next, I, I thought uh, Jermaine Gresham for uh, lunch for Wimps, you know, uh, this guy Sunday morning went on the waiver wire and uh, made a pick, a couple of picks. Actually, he left a lot of PLOB points left on bench. Uh, we left James Jones on, didn't it? This is one of those things, again, you pick someone up off the waiver wire, but you sure well, as hell need a player. I mean, James you know? Jones, I don't think, had scored more than five points in a game yet. He, he was not a non-factor thus far this year. He, he's not a game-breaker But he obviously receiver. lunches for wins you saw something. You and pick him up. Him I think it's hard to put him in the plob category. I think you pick him up, you put him on your bench. Okay, you let me ask you this, about. then. Uh, the Redonculus picks up Victor Cruz off the waiver wire. Well, Leaves him on his bench, you know, 29 points. Why do you pick these people up if you're not going to play? Uh, well, again, I think you're grabbing on the waiver wire when you need help. You're grabbing best available. I don't think you know receivers. a thing about the waiver wire. <laughs> All right, let's get to our power rankings. All right. Okay, uh, why don't you start with your bottom five, bud? Oh, thank you. Well... Start things off, uh, you know, I'm going to go with uh, the Peaceful Warriors. Uh, this management team has proven himself to be uh, uh, suffering from delusions of grandeur, uh, completely arrogant, and his head is in the sky. He picks up Tim Tebow, 
And uh, obviously, he's shipping the Tim Tebow jerseys off to the uh, anchor of this program. This guy doesn't know what that would be. What is Tim Tebow going to do for this roster? This is a, a desperate manager grasping at desperate straws, and it ain't going to fly. Fire Spinning Jimmy's number four on the uh, worst teams. Uh, overall points scored. They've only scored 605 points. The best uh, team has scored over 800 points. It's a, over a 200 point differential. Yeah. Fire Spinning Jimmy's, no matter what kind of fire they spit, uh, all they're spitting at is into the toilet because that's all this team is going is down the toilet. Uh, the King, you know what? Two losses in a row. I think we both had him as our worst team. Well, I think been second there. Second worst yeah. team to start out the season. This team, is true colors are starting to show. I expect him to go down this week, making it three in a row. Ridiculous again uh, at number two. Yeah. The Snake Mitt team. Until you start winning, you don't start going up the power rankings. But, uh... I don't know. I said they're not going to win, and you may win one here or there, but you ain't going enough. You're gonna in the win enough to get to the playoffs. You're in a big hole at 0-5. Next, we got the Boone Humper. I'm a big believer in this team, even though it is the last place team, last power rank team, last everything team. The roster is still there because uh, I've talked with management, and they are fielding trade offers. Some people like what they have on their roster, or else they sure as heck wouldn't be trying to trade for them, would they? Right, well, uh, I disagree that the talent is there. Um, I think that the talent is ever-changing. Uh, they've made the most waiver wire moves in the league, uh, and they're grasping every week, and they're not hitting. The, the John Casey pickup. James Casey. Oh, sorry, James Casey. Uh, he goose-egged them, and that's why I have them again in that bottom slot in my in my bottom five as the worst team by far scored I think a record amount of points in the lower end uh, thus far at 550 I believe just it's barely how many games it's about 101 point we average a game five games it's lousy That's and lousy uh, it's it's not going to cut it, and, and a lot has to change there. Just, I have them as my worst team, but it, going back up the list here, at five of my bottom five, lunches for wimps, moving up a couple slots, they've won two games. They look like they're ready to play with the big dogs. Fire-spitting Jimmy's just couldn't show up, uh, I think with some waiver issues, some bye week stuff, but still, i got to put them at four. I think they've got talent, but it's not happening. Nah. Antonio Gates, we don't know. <laughs> they've got injury issues. We'll uh, see. Yeah, they ought to be the Joker with a question mark. You know? Redonkulous. Uh, again, this was my darling team, and I look at them every week out projecting their opponents. Uh, we've seen that with the Peaceful Warriors doing some under. I've never seen anything I'm seeing like it. It. I'm seeing this with a lot of As much as the mofos are getting uh, lucky, the the, the Redonkulous is getting bad luck. Well, I think, yeah, but I think your your point about the plob points to a major problem. And they're not making the right decisions from week to week. Are they overthinking? Them. I don't know if they're thinking at this point. <laughs> He's replaced his team uh, logo with, a I think, a heavy set man on a big pile of dung. Oh. And his new slogan is pile of poo. So... I don't think they believe in what they have, yeah, yeah. and that could be the problem. Um, you gotta believe first. You know, I'm not here to judge the teams, we're just here to call it as we no, see it. Hey, hey, hey. And then the other two, again, the king doesn't change, he sits at two, I think we just, we know what we're getting out of that team unless they have a big hot week out of nowhere like they did. Have they the had a big hot Warriors. week yet? I mean, Boon up or at the bottom. I mean, this is... Uh, this, this is a no-brainer. So that's my bottom five. All uh, right. Well, why don't you uh, lead off with the top five? Uh, okay. You know, really, not much change. In fact, my top three remained the same. We had Mason, Keith, Colby, a Dr. Dick, and the Rollers. Even though the Rollers lose, because they lose, they stay where they were at three. They don't go up. They don't go down. The Dick continues to roll right on the heels, I think, at this point, of Mason, Keith, Colby, and the power rankings. But Colby uh, on a four-game winning streak, you got to give it to them. They've scored the most points. And until Welker doesn't have a good game, we'll see. 
Mofos at four, and then I got the Peaceful Warriors back.